Hey, it's Russell Moore, and this is Reading in Exile, where we go around the library, pull a book off the shelf, and talk about it. And I know it's been a little while since I've done this. Things have been kind of crazy uh, around here. Uh, I also had last week a friend text me and say, I'm old enough to remember when you used to wear a collared shirt for Reading in Exile. So I did today. I've got the collared shirt on, not the t-shirt uh, today. But uh, today I want to talk about Wendell Berry's Hannah Coulter for a couple reasons. One of them because one of you asked me, or several of you actually asked me to talk about it, uh, but also because this past weekend I was reading a uh, yet-to-be-published novella that was written by uh, one of my former students, actually, that was amazing. It was so good, and it was remarkable because the no novella is from the uh, point of view of an elderly woman uh, being written by someone who's not an elderly woman. And uh, it was completely believable, incredible, and beautiful. And uh, what I said back in responding uh, to this author is to say, this reminded me, not in terms of plot, but in terms of mood of Hannah Coulter and of uh, Marilyn Robinson's Lila, which several of you have also asked me to talk about, and we will a little bit later on. So, Hannah Coulter, rather than sort of tell you the plot of Hannah Coulter, uh, it's not about the plot, it's about getting into the life of this person and to this place. I've put some post-it notes at the top to sort of to remind me of some important places and so I'm just going to read you a few passages and show you how they fit in with the rest of this book and also with the rest of uh, Mr. Barry's work. And so first thing uh, that I come to when I flip it open here is this line. When you are old, you can look back and see yourself when you were young. It is almost like looking down from heaven. And you see yourself as a young woman, just a big girl really, half awake to the world, you see yourself happy, holding in your arms a good, decent, gentle, beloved young man with the blood keen in his veins and who before long is going to disappear, just disappear into a storm of hate and flying metal and fire and you don't know it. I mean, that's just, she, he uh, captures there in her voice uh, what it is to recognize loss, impermanence um, of, of the connection between the generations in a place, but also almost the generations in a in a particular human being's life. To look back and to say, we see I see this happiness here, and I didn't know it was about to go. This impermanence that's there. Okay, then then there's this. This is Hannah talking about the husband that she lost. She says this, the love he bore to me was his own, but also it was a love that had been born to him by people he knew, people I now knew, people he loved. That, I think, was what put tears in his eyes when he looked at me. He must have wondered if I would love those people too. Well, as it turned out, I did. And I would know them as he would never know them. For longer than he knew them, I knew them old in their final years and days, I know them dead. Now, there's a lot uh, encapsulated in that. Um, you have here this understanding, and it's an emphasis a lot in Barry's work, that the human being is not self-created, that uh, you're an individual, yes, but you are the product of all sorts of decisions that are made that, that you um, you don't even know about. You're, you're embedded in a community. And so in this case, uh, the question is whether she, uh, like Ruth and Naomi, is going to be able to receive his people as her people. And also this sense of, again, that connectedness of, of generations. She, uh, she knows them old and she knows them dead. They're, they're present tense here. It's not that they used to be. They're still here. Uh, even though they're they're gone, uh, that's going to show up a lot. Here's a here's a line that uh, uh, that I have uh, that I have marked. Um, this is talking about uh, her son Caleb, uh, who became a not a farmer but an agricultural professor. 
this is a <laughs> this is something that's going to show up in Barry a lot. His sort of irritation with with this sort of thing. But this is what she says. He didn't love farming enough to be a farmer, much as he loved it, but he loved it too much to be entirely happy doing anything else. He is disappointed in himself. He is regretful in some dark passage of his mind that he thinks only he knows about, but he can't hide it from his mother. I can see it in his face as plain as writing. There is the same kind of apology in him that you see in some of the sweeter drunks. He is always trying to make up the difference between the life he has and the life he imagines that he might have had. So um, you have that sense of uh, Barry is gently here uh, and narratively here, but, but elsewhere he takes it straight on. This idea that you have to leave uh, in order to go somewhere. He even talks about elsewhere in this, in this book, I believe, um, you know, these are not people who are worried that they're never going to go anywhere because they think they are somewhere. That's a, that's a major, uh, that's a major emphasis. And then there's, there's this line where it's just one, uh, two sentences here, but it says, want of imagination. And again, talking about the land and the use of the land, want of imagination makes things unreal enough to be destroyed. By imagination, I mean knowledge and love. That's an important part of what uh, Barry is talking about. He, he, he takes on everywhere this technocratic idea that things uh, merely exist to be used and instead uh, talks about affection. There has to be imagination to understand the, the realness of things. It's not just cognitive. It's also affectional. You have to love something in order to really know it. And so, I mean, there's just a lot in this book about love and loss and longing, but also uh, what you're going to find anywhere in Barry that you look, no matter in the in the fiction and the essays and the poems, this idea of membership uh, that we belong to one another, not just in the theological sense and the ecclesiological sense within the church as the body of Christ, but also just in terms of uh, human life in the places where we are. We're dependent upon each other. We're dependent upon the ecosystem, and there's a, a membership. He talks about, uh, again, the, the books run together in my mind, so I'm not sure if this is in Hannah Coulter or in Jaber Crow or somewhere else, but he says, um, he says there's a membership and the difference is just between those who know it and those who don't know it, you know? Uh, so that's a theme. But Hannah Coulter, it's, it's just beautiful. And so for those of you who have asked me if I want to start reading Wendell Berry and I want to start reading the fiction, where do I start? Start here, Hannah Coulter. That's, that's, where, that's where I would start. Let me know in the comments what you would like for us to talk about here in Reading in Exile, and we'll sure try to do it. I'll see you next time.